As most of you know, I'm a small business owner. I am the owner of Telehomemade. Telehomemade is an online spice shop where I create homemade, 100% natural, no chemicals, no preservative, spice blends, olive oils, syrups, as well as sauces, and I ship throughout the United States. Being a small business owner, I'm often asked questions like, how did I get started? Did I have any loans? Did I put my business on credit? Um, how did I find my vendors? Who do you use for a website host? Um, <laughs> what was your step one? I actually received a DM this morning. That is the reason that I'm making this video. And I'm going to link the young lady. The, um, I'm going to link her IG below. She has a food blog. Um, her food looks absolutely delicious and she just wanted some tips. So instead of answering her as well as other DMs and messages I've received individually, I thought it would be best if I just made a video about it. So I'm going to share with you all the, everything that I did from start to finish in order to start my business and I'm going to hopefully briefly tell you why I did it that way. First things first, your name. Before you become a business, you have to make sure you have a catchy name. You have to make sure your name is going to be relatable to people. For me, it was a little, it was kind of easy. I wanted my name to have homemade in it because I wanted my customers to know that everything that they are ordering from me is homemade. I also wanted my name to represent me. My last name is Taylor, Taylor Homemade. Next up, a lot of people told me I needed a logo. For me and my business, I didn't care about a logo. A logo wasn't important to me. I wasn't going to allow not having a logo to stop me or hinder me from putting my business out there to the masses. And for me, my logo, I'm going to show you all one of my items. Um, this is one of my olive oils. My name, my logo is me and my baby. This is my daughter when she was maybe, I want to say three. And the reason she is on all of my labels is because she's the reason why I started this business. Um, before this was a business, this was just a bunch of recipes that I kept to myself that I created in order to resolve a mom issue. So I got my name. I didn't need a logo. What's next? My business need to be legal. <laughs> my business needs to be legal. I do not and will not ever recommend anybody conducting any type of business under the table. It's too many risks. You don't want to be audited. You don't want to be put in a position where the IRS or the government is now taking your property to pay over taxes that you didn't pay because you felt because it was a small business, you didn't have to pay no taxes. No, we're going to do this legally. So I went to my state's website. I found the business section. And I completed every form that I needed to create to make sure that my business was licensed and certified in my state. After I did that, I went on the IRS website and I got an EIN number for my business. The reason I got an EIN number from a business is because you really want to keep your personal and your business separated. So you never really want to operate your business under your social security number. You have to make sure that all your T's is crossed and all your I's is dotted. Okay. After that, I got a PO box. I ship packages throughout the United States, 50 states. I do not want customers that I don't know that is ultimately strangers to know where I live at. Just because a customer purchased from you, that doesn't mean that they're not a criminal. So a PO box was very important. Why? Because I don't have a storefront yet working on it. <laughs> so a PO box was very important. So I have my name, I have all my legal stuff taken care of, and I have a PO box. Hmm. Now I need a bank account because I have to keep 
personal and business separate. I'm just starting this business, so I don't want to go and open a bank account with a traditional bank that's going to have a lot of monthly maintenance fees and things like that, mainly because I haven't sold anything yet. So what can I do? I went on PayPal's website. PayPal has a prepaid business MasterCard where if you authorize your customers to use PayPal on your website, any purchases they make, those amounts will be automatically loaded to that card. On my website, I have PayPal and I also have regular checkout you can use with your debit card. So for that, now I have a bank account for my business, but when I first started, it was strictly PayPal. So now the legal is taken care of. You got your name, you certify, you got your finances. Now you need a website, you need business cards, and you need supplies. I found five different companies that was website builders and hosts. The price ranges they gave me range anywhere from, I'm going to say the cheapest was like $500, honestly. The most expensive was $1,500, and that did not include the monthly fee that they charge you. As a small business owner, I could not afford that. The reason I could not afford that is because for me personally, and this is going to answer one of the questions I get often, for me personally, I refuse to put my business on credit and I refuse to take out loans for my business. Reason being, a few years ago, I unfortunately was an identity theft victim. The criminal somehow, I don't know how they're able to do this. The criminal got up to over $530,000 in debt. All of it was fraud. All of it was identity theft. And it took me almost 10 years to clean that up. Since then, my philosophy is if I don't have the cash to pay for it, I don't want it. I'm not saying that if you don't have the cash to jumpstart your business, don't open it. But what I am saying is you have to be mindful and you have to be smart because a lot of people will sell you a dream and they will tell you, oh, you can make this dream work and then you'll end up quitting your job. You don't got no money because you thought this dream was going to work. It didn't work. Now you're homeless. That, I mean, that's a sad fact. The reality is Dreams don't pay your bills until those dreams are a reality. But you cannot sacrifice your current reality for a dream. So you have to play it smart. So for me, I'm going to invest in my business because I believe this business is going to be something. So since I believe it's going to be something, it does not have to happen tomorrow. So I found a calendar in my house. It was a complete different year, y'all. It was a completely different year. It wasn't even the right year. I hung it on the wall and I circled a random date. I said, on this day, I'm going to launch my website and my business. It was six months away. I got six months to do this. So I cannot afford to spend that type of money. But what I can do is I can sacrifice $150 every single month for these six months and invest that $150 into my business. So the first month I got this $150, how can I create a website for $150? Sounds like it's not doable, right? I found GoDaddy, Squarespace, and Winx. I chose Squarespace. Squarespace was $30 a month. Not only was it $30 a month, that was $30 a month for a commerce plan. They got different plans. I chose commerce because I have a lot of customers. It's more customer friendly. So it's $30 a month. I wanted to have a professional website address. When my customers log on to my website, I want them to be able to launch www.telehomemade.net and my page come up. Why? Because when a lot of consumers see websites like www.telehomemade.squarespace.qw.2x.com, they're not going to take you seriously because they're going to be like, why isn't this a real website? Why isn't this a real website? 
So you have to be willing to invest in you if you are expecting other people to invest in you. So I got my website. Now I need my business cards. I contact a couple of companies to make my business cards. The cheapest was around 250. The most expensive was around 500. I can't do that. It's a small business. I have $150 that I allotted every month to invest in my business. I cannot do that. So I found Vistaprint and I found Zazzle. Vistaprint.com. I'm going to link as many things as I possibly can below. Vistaprint was the most affordable. I believe at that time you can get around 100 business cards for like $9.99. Zazzle.com was more expensive. And when I mean more expensive, I mean, I believe I paid $45 for my business cards, but the quality of the card is better. They have more designs and they have a huge selection of templates. So that's where I went to. So I got my business cards. So my website, one month, my website cost me what? 50 bucks and an hour to set it up myself. What? I still got money left. The next month, I got my business cards. That was only like 45 bucks. I still got money left. So by month three, not only did I have the 150 that I was putting up for month three, but now I had change left over from month two and month one to add with month three. So now I can buy my supplies. When you start in a business, it's going to take some time to figure out which vendors are good, which vendors are genuine, who really connects with your business and who really wants to be a part of your business. Just because they're not an actual partner doesn't mean they are not a part of your business because you are depending on that vendor to give you quality product in order for you to give your customers quality product. It took me a long time to find great vendors. It actually took me longer than the six months to find the vendors. But one thing I did have before I had the vendors that I have now is Amazon. Instead of using regular Amazon, I use Amazon Business. The great thing about Amazon business is they have a lot of vendors. So you have access to more supplies that you may need for your business that you normally would not have if you just use your regular Amazon account. The drawback or negative of Amazon business is they don't have Prime. So say for instance, I ordered something off my Amazon, my personal Amazon Prime yesterday. Um, no, I'm not going to say yesterday. Monday. I would have gotten it on Wednesday with Amazon business. If I ordered something today, which is Wednesday on Amazon business, I probably won't get it until next Friday or the following Monday. That's the only negative. So that's what I did. When I first started, I used Amazon business, not only for my jars, but also for my supplies, such as my herbs. Why? Because the average grocery store, does not sell 100% per herb, such as like tarragon, basil, fresh rosemary. You're not going to be able to walk into your average grocery store and be able to buy that in bulk. So I use Amazon a lot. Me and Amazon became besties when I first started. Now I have a direct um, supplier from India. It's a little annoying because sometimes the packages take longer to get here now mainly because of corona but it's the best thing i've done um another thing is it was important for me that i just didn't launch my website i needed to make sure i had my product right then and then one of the pet peeves i have as a consumer is somebody who's selling a product but they don't have possession of the product so you want to say, for instance, your homegirls, a couple of your homegirls, they got a couple of boutiques. So this one home girl, she got a hair shop. This one girl has, um, let's say she sell clothes and she posts some stuff on her webpage and you see, ooh, that, that's a cute dress. I got to get me that dress. And you go to check out and then the fine print says, please allow 10 to 15 days to process. 
and an additional 10 days to ship. That's telling your customers you don't have your product right now. So instead of checking out, your, your consumer is going to hit cancel and they're going to go somewhere else that has that product right now. Because if somebody is buying a product, it's most of the time, I'm going to say 95% of the time, it's because they need it right now. That's like I know somebody, I know a couple of girls who sells hair. I know three women who sell hair. So one of them hair, I'm going to be completely honest, it's, it's trash, y'all. If I still wore tracks, I would not wear it at all. Two of their hair, honey, you can't even tell. If they did not tell you this was tracks, you would have thought it grew out. They scalp. The hair is so good. It's so good, and the quality is so good. Out of those three young ladies, tell me which ones you think is the most successful. If you said the ones with the good hair, you wrong. The one with the trash hair, she is the most successful. Why? Because although her hair isn't the greatest, her hair is available right now. It's, 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 it's available right now. Nobody, especially with something like hair, and I'm using hair as an example because it's so many women selling hair right now. The thing about hair is hair is so expensive. You cannot expect somebody to pay $300 for some hair extensions and then tell them they got to wait a month because that's telling your customer that you don't have this product right now. So you go take my money. You go spend my money but you don't have the product. So you got to order your product from overseas and then you got to send it to me. A lot of consumers is not going to be okay with that versus the girl who don't have the great hair. What she did, she just hypothetically brought 10 bundles from this vendor. He shipped all 10. She took a thousand dollars. Forget it. thousand dollars. I'm going to buy me some hair and then I'm going to flip this hair. So she brought 10 bundles. She invested a thousand dollars of her own money. She got the hair. She then posted them bundles for $300. Not only did she get the money she spent back, but she did not only just double her money. She tripled her money because she got her hair. She sold it to the consumer and was able to ship it to the consumer the same day. So if anything, if you want your business to be successful, you got to have patience. You got to be realistic and you have to know that just because you, you does not mean people is going to flock to you. Just because you got a pop in personal Facebook page, that does not mean your 500 subscribers or followers is all going to purchase from you. In most cases, your first customer will be somebody you don't even know. A lot of people think it's because of hating, but it's it's not really into the hate. It's not about hating or any of that stuff at all. Well, sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's simply because they might not like your product. And if you are going to start a small business, you have to pick something, stick to it, and focus on that. One of the biggest things that will cause a small business that has the opportunity to be a great business to fail if they switching it up too much. Because you keep switching it up. Your customers don't know who you are. Like, what, what you sell, sis? Last week, you were selling clothes. Yesterday, you were selling natural hair products, but you ain't been natural since birth. Today, you're selling CBD. Two weeks ago, you were selling lunch boxes. Like you have you, if you want people to take you seriously, you have to take your business seriously. And the last, and certainly not least, the last thing I did that helped my business tremendously was using social media and utilizing social media. Okay. Social media is probably the best thing that has ever happened to small business. If you have a small business, get you a business IG page for your business. A business account is different from a personal account. Not only do you get you a business IG page, get you a business Facebook page. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's 2020. People not checking for Facebook like that no more. Yes, they are. 
The average person on Instagram is 25 and younger. Oh, I'm going to say 30 and younger. 40 and above still utilizes Facebook. In most cases, them 16-year-olds and them 19-year-olds that's TikToking it on IG, they not making no purchases, but they mama is, they sister is, they older cousin is, they homegirl auntie is. You have to make sure that you are not limiting your audience. And one of the great thing about Instagram and Facebook is for your business page, they work together. So you could promote your business pages. Hashtags is great. That's a free way to market yourself on Instagram, but that's not the only way. You have to spend some money. If you want people to give you money, you want to make money, you got to be willing to spend money. You can use um, Instagram's marketing tool, meaning you will pay them, and then they'll share your account with 100 to 500 to 1,000 different accounts. And from that, you'll either gain followers or you will gain web website clicks or you will gain some sales. Same thing with Facebook. You use their marketing tool. You pay for how much you want to market. Pay for how many days you want it to go. And they will share your business page to thousands of people if you choose from. And it's not that expensive. Their prices start at $5. I think it's like $5 a day. You choose. The more money you spend, the more people is going to connect to your page. When I started my business, my Facebook page had, I want to say 350 followers. My Instagram had 78 followers. And I just started telling homemade last August. With the 350 something followers on Facebook and the 70 something on Instagram, I maybe made a sale once every month. When I started using the marketing tool, not only did I get clicks, but I went from making a sale a month or every other month to I'm making a sale every two hours to last month I made $5,000 in sales to the month before I made $1,000 in sales. It's worth it. You have to invest in yourself in order for people to invest in you. I hope that answered any questions you all may have. And until next time, bye guys.